Good evening, everybody. Well, as you can see, we are staring at the uh, TV screen with the the home of the uh, PlayStation 3. I've just turned it on since it's fairly noisy. Um, there's a possibility I'm going to have to make one or two edits here and there because some of the things I'm showing you might get a little loud. So I'll try to avoid, uh, you know, surprising you with many very loud noises. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, this is going to be about a particular game that's now kind of nostalgic, uh, which is Gran Turismo 5. And here we are with the warning screens. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty loud. All right, and more warning <laughs> screens. I guess there's a high enough frame rate now that uh, they have to warn you of the epilepsy warning. Um, also, the effects of 3D. Um, I'm not too sure if this is a 3D screen or not. Uh, but anyway, um, those of you who've watched all of my model videos um, know that a lot of particular cars are very much inspired from playing Gran Turismo. Um, they may not always get the um, engine sounds correct, but very often um, the rendering of the, the body and so forth um, looks fantastic and the handling is really nice. Um, Obviously, in this generation of Gran Turismo, we still have premium and standard uh, car models as far as the graphics. Uh, standard is the, um, the lower quality models that have made it through from older versions of the game. And the premiums are the ones that have, you know, been rendered in the full quality that the PlayStation 3 is capable of. Um, so why don't we go ahead and jump on out of this demo screen. Sign in. Well, this game is not supported anymore, so we won't do that. <laughs> the reason I'm showing you uh, Gran Turismo 5 and not 6 is because uh, I really didn't play Gran Turismo 6 for very long. Um, it took a you know, ridiculously low amount of time to complete all of the in-game uh, races and so forth, and so yeah, it wasn't it wasn't really that interesting. And I actually found that the the handling characteristics, in some ways, they'd improved, but in a lot of ways, they were slower, which was not real fun for me. So went back to. GT5, where we've got more instant kind of handling that I would expect in, you know, performance cars. So, so here we are at the home screen. Um, you can see I've chosen the background image as a, as a little section of the Nurburgring. Um, why don't I go ahead and click on profile real quick? <laughs> so you can see I didn't I didn't bother getting very far in. B spec level. It's only at 29. Um, a spec level 40, that's the highest you can go. It's not really that hard to achieve, so um, you can kind of see some of the other game progress. Um, you can see the licenses that I have. Um, some of the other cars that I've made available for um, sharing online when I was still doing that. Actually, not too sure if all of these were part of that or what. Anyway, um, I don't know if I have much in my photo album. Why don't we just go ahead and look at that real quick? Oh, I do. I have a few interesting pictures. Um, most of these were taken 
to illustrate um, having ABS turned off. As you jump into the uh, carousel, your inside front wheel locks up because it's not touching the pavement. So you get this cool effect where the rear wheel is blurred because it's still moving very fast. The front wheel stops. <laughs> so pretty cool. Um, and of course I did the same effect with the uh, Ferrari race car. <laughs> And what's nice about this one is you can see all four wheels. So you can see the outside front tire still in motion and the front <laughs> inside tire locked up and you can even see some smoke coming off the wheels. So that's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> probably did some drifting pictures at the uh, Iger in the Chaparral. <laughs> Just kind of fun stuff, I don't know. The scenery is cool. Um, here's another shot of the same car during a race. Um, <laughs> some airborne, airborne pictures. <laughs> yeah, those are kind of fun. It's kind of cool to see the Basically, the, the car is higher than the than its own height in the air. Um, there's a couple of other fun shots. Um, coming out of the Flans Garden, there's a big jump, and when the cars land, there's usually a big puff of smoke. And uh, did the same thing while driving the number 99. Uh, Fusion, which is my favorite NASCAR, at least in this game. So, but yeah, there's some fun action shots, you know. Um, and once more, various shots of uh, cars jumping into the carousel. This is another favorite car I like. Looks like I didn't quite catch it with a locked front wheel. This one I did, though. There we go. Pretty cool. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a few other different kinds of shots down here. Um, obviously, there's a few places where you can... You're just, you know, taking glamour shots of your car. Obviously, the uh, Ferrari F40 in the Tokyo regions. Very beautiful with all the... Uh, lovely um, cherry blossoms. Is this Tokyo? Kyoto. Kyoto. Yeah, there we go. And one final shot that's pretty funny to show. Um, <laughs> as you come around this really fast corner, if you take too much curb, then you go up on two wheels. <laughs> so yeah, that was a fun little shot. <laughs> And yes, the car does go back down on all four, so. Okay. Um, there's some other stuff in here, replay theater, that might take too long to show. Um, so let's go in and hop to the garage. Which is why I brought you here in the first place. <laughs> so, as you can see, I've got, you know, several hundred cars in the premium section. And quite a lot more 697 cars in the standard section. But let's start with the favorites section. So, and we'll sort by driven. Order used. There we go. Alright. So, right now I have the Audi R8 LMS. Selected as my car. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love this car. Um, by the way, each car does have the tuning. Um, and this is where you can actually set up how the car behaves. So I've got 
racing soft tires on. Um, if you go into the body, then uh, mainly you can adjust the arrow and the weight ballast. Um, so you just basically dial in how much front or rear, rear wing you want on. And of course they each have a range of uh, how low and how high you can set them. So basically the idea is uh, to optimize the top speed and the cornering and also the front to rear balance. And mostly um, that affects the... Uh, let's go ahead and turn this music down. Um, that affects the uh, balance in high speed corners and mid mid speed corners. So, um, of course, there's a certain amount of interplay between the arrow balance and the mechanical grip balance, you might say. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of factors that you can play with to get the car to behave the way you want to. Um, I also have a weight ballast dialed in. I'm actually surprised that I'm still racing this car with this much weight. Um, for a while, just to make things interesting, I started adding my own body weight to the car. So um, 91 kilos was sort of a, a good estimate of what I was weighing at the time when I was doing that. So I believe that's about, uh, let's see, 199, maybe 200 pounds, something like that. Um, I still weigh roughly that a little bit more, but uh, yeah, pretty close to 200. Um, so yeah, that definitely, you know, makes the car not quite as quick and uh, a little more clumsy in corners. <laughs> also, braking distances are longer and things like that. So uh, Here you can set the power limiter if you want to. Um, this is useful just to equalize a car's power so that you can race it among different classes of cars. Um, lots of races have a performance point limitation, so to qualify for the race you have to be under a certain performance point level. So one way to achieve that with your car's tuning is to dial back the amount of horsepower. Um, you can also add weight, turn, you know, less uh, arrow, things like that. Uh, this car doesn't have anything on the intake system that I can adjust. The exhaust, it already comes with a uh, racing exhaust. Turbo kits, I haven't, I haven't uh, attached any, but if you wanted to boost the power in mid RPM or high RPM range, you can choose those, which of course dramatically increases the number of horsepower and performance points. So usually I don't like adding turbos because um, it makes the power very lumpy. The power delivery, you know, it, it gets very difficult to judge how much power, how much f your right foot should go down because within a certain rev range, the, the amount of power that you get back is, you know, is a certain amount that you would expect and then it suddenly lumps in a bunch of power when the, when the revs climb a little more, so. Yeah, that's kind of tedious to deal with, so. Uh, fully customizable transmission. And this allows me to set the gear ratios and the final gear. Um, so I can dial in whatever level of gearing that uh, best suits the power band um, and uh, all the other factors that I've dialed in so far. So it also depends a lot on what track you're racing at because there are tracks that you're simply not going to achieve the the top speed that the car is capable of because you simply don't have the time, you don't have the distance of accelerating. Um, Monaco is a, tr is a track that comes to mind. So uh, you can just quickly adjust the final gear and leave the other ratios where they are and then that's a, a really quick way of, of uh, readjusting for each track course you can get more detailed with that if you want to. Um, the adjustable limited slip differential. Of course this is a rear drive car. Um, initial torque is kind of just the amount of, of uh, slip that's normally in the car, how the car feels when you're just driving um, 
at any particular time. Um, acceleration sensitivity is when you have, it mostly affects how you exit corners. And then braking sensitivity affects how the entry of corners feels. So um, you can adjust these numbers separately up or down uh, to change the way that the handling is. And, um, you know, uh, this interplays a lot with, with uh, braking, of course, but also just the general amount of uh, steering lock that you want to put on. So since the steering rack is not something that this game lets you control. So suspension, again, fully customizable. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the geometry of the suspension has a lot of adjustments to it. Um, basically, uh, <laughs> you know, front to rear, the suspension, um, you can adjust the ride height. Um, this game still had a bug in it where if you adjust the front ride height a little higher than the rear, uh, it would affect your top speed. It would make it easier to, to reach a higher top speed. Um, not taking advantage of it in this car. Um, <clears throat> the spring rate uh, and then the dampers, those are generally how fast the um, shocks react to bumps and um, there's two settings for the dampers and that's for the exten extension and compression. Uh, basically compression you usually set a little softer than extension um, so that the recoil keeps the um, bounce from bouncing more than once. Um, Anti-roll bars. Um, mostly, a lot of times this allows you to control um, front to rear balance, so uh, if your car is too likely to oversteer, you can soften the rear anti-roll bar. Or if your car is understeering a lot, then you can soften the front anti-roll bar. Um, camber angle. Uh, generally you're talking about negative camber because you want the tires to lean in, um, which increases their cornering ability. Um, so you got two degrees of camber in the front, one degree in the rear. Um, rear camber obviously with the rear wheel drive you, you don't want to put too much rear camber because it, it negatively affects um, acceleration and any amount of camber on the front or the rear is going to somewhat compromise your braking. So, toe angle. Um, basically, I don't worry about having a toe angle in the front, it's just straight. Rear toe angle, um, lots of times you can put a little, you can make the tires lean inward a little bit if, you're, if your rear end tends to move around a lot, or you can point them out if you want to make the rear move more in corners. So, braking. Again, brake balance is adjustable. Sorry, I have to keep checking the counter. Um, I have uh, ABS turned off uh, along with all the other driver aids. I don't use any driver aids. Uh, no traction control, no stability control, no ABS, no um, skid recovery, none of that is turned on. Um, and the easiest way to make sure, you know, the default brake balance is 5.5 five, and so essentially I don't think that they necessarily account for the fact that you don't need anywhere near as much brake balance in the, in the rear, generally speaking, because when you're braking the car is leaning towards the front, so that's why when you look at most cars, the brakes are huge on the front tires and they're considerably smaller in the rear. So it's just because there's not as much weight in the rear of the car. So um, as you brake and the weight transfers to the front wheels, if there's too much brake balance towards the rear, the rear wheels will just lock up. And when the rear wheels lock up on a corner entry, the rear starts to break loose, which is not a comfortable feeling at all. So, um, so that's why I have the brake balance pushed more towards the front so that when I slam my foot on the brake and then start to ease off, um, the, the braking front to rear feels, you know, 
appropriate. So the car rotates a little bit, but I don't want it to rotate too crazy. Uh, all right. And that's about it. The tires, you just set which compound you're running on. Setting sheet gives you three different presets that you can set. So the entire, every single setting of the car, you can have three different variations of it. Um, and then you s switch between them right here. And there's some copy and edit functions as well. All right. So there we have the general stuff about tuning. <laughs> All right. So here we are with uh, my favorite NASCAR car. Um, it's a Ford Fusion. Uh, it has, I think, the most horsepower, 892. Um, and mainly what I really like, other than the cool uh, Aflac livery, <laughs> which happens to be mostly black, um, I really, really like the way this car sounds. The the engine note that they got for this one just seems to be pretty aggressive and, and sounds as close as, as this game gets to a real NASCAR V8. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite fun to drive. And surprisingly, the driving style it takes is very similar to F1 because you just have to be really careful and be very, very, very smooth in your inputs. Um, one funny thing to note about this car, because it's big and heavy, obviously it weighs 1,500 kilos, which is, what, 3,400 pounds. Um, it doesn't rotate as much as I would like it to. So one of the things I have set is I have the, the differential as close to locking as it will go the lowest number you can give it is five. Um, and that's on the initial torque and the braking sensitivity. So basically that makes the car really likely to rotate as far as the differential is concerned. And then the acceleration sensitivity, this defaults to 40. So I set it just a little bit less to 38 so that I can use the power to rotate the car if I want to. Um, most of the other settings are just kind of, you know, probably using as much arrow as available. <laughs> oh, I actually have less in the rear. Again, that's so that the car will rotate. Um, the front, I'm sure, is maxed out, though. Yes. Okay, so anyway, there's a bunch of other s settings that I set it. Basically, the NASCAR you know, because it's so heavy, um, I probably have the suspension as hard as it goes, and, uh, you know, basically everything's dialed in to try and help the car turn, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do race this on the Nürburgring all the time, and, you know, you'd think that wouldn't be a perfect match, but I really, really like, and I really enjoy driving this car around the Nordschleife. So, it's quite a challenge. Uh, next... We have the Pecani Sonda R. Again, this is a car I've shown you in videos before. Uh, it's incredibly beautiful, and it really handles nicely. Um, I mean, in real life, this car turns the Nürburgring in 647. Uh, in the game, you're more like around six minutes or less. Um, it's quite a fantastic dr uh, driving experience and it sounds really cool. It's got a howl to it because it's a V12, so. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> um, I don't want to bore you too much with poking around in the uh, tuning of every single car, but <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. The uh, other thing you can notice is I switched cars to this 14 times <laughs> and driven it almost a thousand miles, so. All right, now we have the uh, Nissan R89C race car, which is 
as the name implies, from 1989. Um, <laughs> this is one of the cars from the awesome Group C era. Uh, Group C is sort of what uh, Le Mans prototypes class is now, but um, just, I don't know, very nostalgic and a cool time. These cars uh, were capable of ridiculous amounts of horsepower, upwards of 1,200 horsepower with the full turbo boost. Um, they probably raced with more like 800 horsepower. 1,200 would be usually for qualifying, and uh, 800 would be more like the racing amount of power because there's a certain degree of efficiency <laughs> which you know in the long run is more likely to win the race so um, yeah but this car is really really fun to drive and the cool thing is this is one of the cars in Gran Turismo that uh, when you use the hood view the car takes up the full width of the screen and it's the camera position is lower. A lot of the, most of the time when I'm driving in this game, I set it to hood view and not cockpit view because cockpit view sticks a, a steering wheel on the screen. And when I'm already driving with one in my hands, I don't need it repeated on the screen. Not to mention that the animation of the steering wheel is slower. So it's pretty distracting. <laughs> so, but, most of the cars have the camera mounted what looks like just above the windscreen which means it's a bit too high and the perspective is a little bit is a little bit weird this car it feels like it's positioned just behind the screen so you get the proper width and the depth depth perception and so forth so this is that's another reason this car is really fun there's several um group c cars that are set up that way so um Next we have the Opel Astra Touring Car. Now there's a bunch of DTM cars in here that I really enjoy. Um, I've said in videos before how much I love these cars. Um, ever since I started driving this particular car, because it was in pretty much, I think it was in as far back as Gran Turismo 3, which was the first game that I started playing. Um, yeah, <laughs> immediately noticed just the car is very planted and very agile. You just turn the wheel and it goes where you want. So, um, And the amount of horsepower is high, sort of, but not so much that it's difficult to handle. So, you know, upwards of almost 500 horsepower um, for a car with this much handling is is just really fun you know you can just throw it around a lot and have a good time um, the next one now if I had to name my favorite car in the game this would be arguably one of the top three which is the Formula Gran Turismo um, aside from the Red Bull <laughs> X car uh, this car is going to probably produce the fastest lap time pretty much at any track um, just because it's very fast but it's also extremely extremely agile um, and it takes very fast reflexes to drive this car um, you can see obviously this particular car has 8,000 miles on it and I've driven it 48 times now this is just one of I think I have well, this car comes in 10 colors, and I've driven most of them because I have every color, so I don't know. Between all of the cars, I have no idea how many miles I would have driven it, but um, let's see if this has any interesting points about the tuning. Um, 935 horsepower, and it only weighs 550 kilos, so about, what, 1,200 pounds or so. Um, the suspension I have set up in such a way that it's essentially, yeah, spring rate is at 19, which it only goes up to 20, so um, much more extreme camber settings, 
toe angle on the front and the rear. Um, yeah. <laughs> and of course I'm taking advantage of the the glitch that uh, gives the ride height um, difference, you know, a higher top speed, so. Um, yeah, but basically it's just a really fun car to drive. Love it. Oops. What happened there? There we go. All right. We have the high-end performance G37, which was a SEMA show award winner. Um, this car has really good handling. Um, that's the main reason I enjoy driving it. So, but yeah, it also kind of sounds cool, but mainly I just, I just think it's fun to drive, so, yeah. And essentially it's, I don't know, I'm not sure if there's any, uh, infinities in this game yet, so this is the closest thing to it. <laughs> Yeah, now we get to a really cool car, the Chaparral 2D. Now the cool thing about the Chaparral cars is that they only have three gears. Uh, and the rumble you get from the engine, oh my god, the sound of this car is so cool. Uh, really fun to drive. Um, it's one of my favorite cars to do like David and Goliath sort of races because as you can see it only has 400 some horsepower but it's so light that it still accelerates very quickly <laughs> so yeah driven it quite a lot as you can see 18 times 3,000 miles <laughs> all right the Amamiya Spara Drink RX-7. Um, I think this car, this car does have a very, very wide um, camera view. So again, it seems to be positioned instead of way up here on the roof. The camera seems like you'd be more like right here where the driver's head really would be. Um, so the perspective is really nice. But what I really like is this car sounds really cool because it, it kind of has that um, that sort of raspy uh, rotary engine sound and what I also like is that I've boosted this car's power and everything else so that it's closer to being a GT500 car instead of GT300 which is what it usually um, comes as so <laughs> anyway again great handling really awesome fun car to drive so um, it's fun to throw around a lot. Um, Porsche was never a brand that that the Gran Turismo series could get the licensing on, so we had to have the next best thing, which is Roof, which is tuned. It's a Porsche tuning um, brand. So um, I actually have seen this car in a episode of Modern Marvels on the History Channel. Um, when they were talking about the Autobahn uh, because this company when they tune up a Porsche and give it you know some amazing amount of extra power and so forth uh, they test it on the Autobahn at night to make sure that it performs the way that the customer expects it to so um, this car has got an amazing amount of mileage considering I've only driven it twice uh, possibly might have bought this from the used dealer. So, next we have the Volkswagen Carmen Kia. Mainly like driving this car because it's the rear engined drivetrain. So, it doesn't have a lot of horsepower 45. Wee! Amazing. Um, but the balance is really fun to play with. You can really toss this car around and, and, uh, if you like driving with opposite lock, um, that's the way you can make this car corner. So uh, I've mostly toyed around with it uh, around the Nordschleife just to see, because it's it's fun to take a car that has very little power around a track like that, because 
then you get into sort of a momentum racing style because, you know, you don't have much power. You gotta carry speed as much as you can. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ford GT40 1969, definitely one of my top three favorite cars of all time, without question. Um, this car sounded a lot better in the previous version of the game, though. Uh, Gran Turismo 4 got the got the engine sound pretty close for for being, you know, kind of artificial sounding in a game, but <clears throat> it got that really high pitched um, exhaust sound. And um, but the handling is a real challenge. This car really feels like what it is, which is a race car with the engine behind the driver and that rear end loves to move around. So uh, I used to think that this car was impossible to drive around the Nürburgring because it would just not, it would just not stay composed. And it took a long time to learn how to drive it properly and also make a few tweaks to the setup so that it would be a little more well behaved. But, <coughs> excuse me, honestly, you know, it's really up to the driver because this car can be wonderful to drive and very fast, but it doesn't forgive mistakes. <laughs> so, and as you can see, I've driven it 21 times. I probably have more than one of them. <laughs> <clears throat> Here we have the Nissan GTR, the um, GTR N24. That's the Nürburgring 24 hours uh, race car. Um, this uh, car has been done a few times in the game, different different years that they ran it, but one of them, uh, they, I don't know why, but they decided to lock the tuning. So you couldn't change the suspension setting and a bunch of other things, and the car just handled terribly. It was awful. But this car, the, the 2011, is fantastic. Um, if you like driving a car that's it's fairly heavy, as you can see, weighs more than an NASCAR car. It's almost 1,600 kilos, um, and it has about 500 some horsepower. Um, but it it's fun to race against higher class cars, and uh, it's pretty decent handling, and you can really throw it around. And it's also four wheel drive, so there's some things you can do with uh, the setup of the diff and and uh, I think you can even control the um, the power front to rear distribution. So uh, it's a real fun car to drive. Got another Formula Gran Turismo. This time it's red instead of orange. Um, yeah, driven it many times, as you can see. 21 switches, uh, 4,000 more miles. Yep. Ah, the Lister Storm. I wish I could get the, a model of this car. Um, Tiff Nadell drove this car, and he did some episodes of Fifth Gear while driving this, I think. Um, anyway, it's got a V12 engine, and it's one of the few cars in this game that really sound very cool, and it's a lot of fun to drive. So, um, yeah. Again, kind of heavy. 1400 some kilos and but it has the power to make up for it 623 so yeah I've enjoyed driving this a lot around uh, Le Mans <laughs> the Audi TTR touring car um, this is another car that has a really unique uh, engine sound and um, really nice handling. It's really fun to drive. So any race that uh, involves DTM or JGTC, any kind of grand, uh, grand touring GT racing cars, this is a really fun, fun competitor. And it's endorsed by Red Bull, of course, which I certainly don't mind. <laughs> so the Corvette C2 race car, 1963. Um, this car features a lot if you like to uh, check out the Monterey Motorsports Reunion. 
the number 614 Washburn Chevrolet uh, Corvette, 1963. And the cool thing about the 63 is this split rear window. <laughs> it's kind of neat, but um, yeah, the C2 generation Corvette is what my dad owned. He had a 1965. And um, yeah, riding around in a car that sounded like this was quite a lot of fun growing up. <laughs> he would show up uh, to pick me up early on Fridays from grade school. So I'd be in my sixth grade class on a Friday and you could hear this car coming from a long way off. So quite fun. Oh uh, yeah, Dodge Viper, GTSR. Uh, this car will always be very close to my heart because the one time I've been around the Nürburgring Nordschleife as a passenger was in the Zack Speed Viper. So it was basically the same car as this right here. So whenever I drive this now around the Nürburgring, that's often what I'm thinking about. Um, it's got a really brutal sounding engine. I think that they've set it up as a V8 even though the Viper really is supposed to be a V12. Uh, I don't know if they do that by leaving just eight out of the 10 cylinders running. Um, I've heard that, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Orica, it's a French team. And uh, yes, when they raced Vipers, um, I believe they started racing these at Le Mans and they were immensely popular and uh, it's just such a cool car. I love Vipers. I wish I could own a Viper, for sure. Here we have the BMW McLaren F1 GTR uh, race car. The unique thing about this car, you can even probably see, the driver sits right in the center. And uh, the real road cars did the same thing. You'd have the driver in the center, and then you had two passenger seats just behind the driver to the left and to the right. Um, this is the long tail race car. So you can see it comes pretty far off the back of the car. Uh, the other unique thing about the uh, McLaren F1 is it was the first road car, I believe, and they came out in 1994, I want to say. It was the first road car to reach 240 miles per hour. So. Um, I believe they're V12 engines, um, and yeah, engine in the rear, which makes the handling quite interesting. Um, a little like the qualities of the uh, Ford GT40, where it's just very lively rear end, and uh, but it's very fun, really fun to drive. This is definitely, a, again, one of my favorite cars, favorite among the favorites. Ah, the Nissan GTR Concept LM race car. Um, when the R34 was the, f the most recent generation and the R35 had not come out yet, um, they had this concept for the R35 kind of in between. I don't remember exactly what year this would have been, but um, when they made this car in the game you can see this cool rear end um, but yeah the the concept car obviously set up for Le Mans racing kind of thing um, not to mention it has seven gears which makes which makes setting up the car really interesting but um, what was cool is once I got this set up uh, and was driving it a lot around the Nordschleife I seem to be using the same gears in the same most of the same corners as I did for the Formula Gran Turismo, just at lower speeds, of course. So that was pretty fun. But yeah, it's it's nice. The gears shift very very quickly. Um, so yeah, <laughs> quite a fun car to drive. I think this MRS is a more recent addition to my favorites. I started uh, driving some of the GT300 uh, race cars and just kind of playing around and uh, yeah they're they're a lot of fun sometimes you know so this is one of them. 
Uh, here we have another Formula Gran Turismo, this time in the old um, McLaren colors. Um, probably, you know, let's say around between 2003 and 2005. Just the black and silver. Um, that's what I always think of. It'd be like when Kimi Raikkonen was driving for McLaren and and repeatedly just missing out on winning championships because the car was always letting him down. <laughs> um, here we have a new generation Ford GT in the Le Mans Spec 2 um, setup in the trim, racing trim, you know. Um, it's just such a cool car to drive. Um, you know, almost 600 horsepower. A little bit heavy at 1,200 kilos, but uh, but yeah, very fun to drive and just so cool in this black carbon fiber. Um, just such a cool car. I love it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just love to take a nice long drink of that. <laughs> it's beautiful. All right. Ooh, yeah, the uh, RX-7 LM race car, Le Mans, um, it's still basically GT500 level, you have 500 horsepower, um, but again, it's it's got a cool sounding engine and it's just fun to drive, and it's not much more to say about it, it's just fun, it's another, another car that's fun to throw in, um, yeah, very often race it around the Nürburgring. And it comes in many colors, so I was collecting them for a while. Honda S2000 LM. <laughs> um, this is definitely a David and Goliath car. Um, because it's so small, that 382 horsepower gets you a pretty good power to weight ratio. So you can take on cars that are much more powerful. Um, and plus the sound of this car, it's just so thick and rumbly, um, which may be because it only has a four cylinder engine, so it's half of a V8, I guess. But, um, and this also comes in lots of colors, so it's fun to uh, collect them. I don't know why uh, I've only driven this once. I think I have a blue one too. The Pagani Zonda LM race car. Very fun, once again. Um, it's sort of similar to driving the uh, Zonda R, but not exactly. Um, but this car has been in the game quite a lot longer, so it's been pretty fun to drive in Gran Turismo 3 and 4. At least I think it was in 3 as well. So. The new Camaro SS RM, which is racing modified, um, kind of went crazy with the livery here. This was actually just me screwing around with some colors and uh, <laughs> how can you go wrong with Hawaiian blue metallic with gold rims, right? <laughs> but yeah, the new Camaro has just got a really nice balance. So any of the, whether it's the the stock one or a racing modified one. They're just really fun to drive. They sound pretty cool. Mercedes-Benz 190E 2.5 Evolution. Uh, this is an older touring, touring car uh, from 1992. Uh, it still has almost 500 horsepower, but uh, it mostly gets that by revving the engine really high, and, and it doesn't feel like that much horsepower when you drive it, trust me. <laughs> this is one of the slower uh, touring cars that are in the game. Um, but it's still really fun to drive it. Um, so yeah, I enjoy driving quite a bit, as you can see, 14 times. The Wet Sport Celica. Uh, it's got 400 horsepower. I think it probably started off with 300, so I probably had in mind to uh, race it as a 500, a GT500 car. 
but didn't quite get there. So, but still fun. Uh, same with the Garaya. At least I think how you, that's how you pronounce it. The Arda Garaya. It's just cool looking. But yeah, I think it started as a GT300 car, and I probably tried to boost it to 500-ish. Just a, another low-power car to, to challenge at the higher levels. <laughs> Here's a Jaguar XJ220 LM. Not much to say. It's just fun to drive. It's cool. <laughs> Enjoy it. Something different. Oh yeah. This was one of the more successful uh, JGTC cars of its era. Um, Motoyama, I think, was the driver. Um, as you can see, this series uh, has success ballast, <laughs> and it has quite a few of them and yet still somehow managed to do really well, even when weighed down a lot extra. So, um, But yeah, this car is just really fun to drive. It rotates really nicely. Obviously, it's uh, the R34 generation Skyline. Um, yeah, just really fell in love with this car. And I do have a model of it. <laughs> uh, it's wonderful. But as you can see, the standard... Um, you know, graphics are a little bit low quality. Um, you can see the pixels and stuff, so at certain angles it doesn't quite look as good, but it's still so fun to drive. <coughs> Here's my blue S2000 LM. Driven it quite a bit more than the other one. It just looks cool. I like it. Here's another little bit less powerful RX-7, but it looks cool and it's fun. It sounds good. Um, yeah. Not sure what Amamiya does, this brand here. <laughs> or RE for that matter. Anyway. The Ausaruma. Supra. Very fun car to drive. Um, it's not quite as fast as some of the other JGTC cars. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed driving this car. Very nice. Um, the HSV. I really used to like this car a lot when they first added it to the game. Um, sadly, this was one of the cars where they decided for some reason to change the engine sound, and they didn't change it for the better, that's for sure. This used to sound like this wonderful, high-pitched, crazy, shrieking car that sounded a little bit like an F1 car or something. Uh, and what they ended up with was kind of harsh on the ears, really. <laughs> so, uh, sadly, I drove this a lot, but I really don't much more. I still think it looks really cool, and the real car, if you see it in um, older uh, Super GT races around 2010, 2011, 2012, uh, yeah, look and listen for it, because it's a really cool car. <laughs> so, I love the the Weeder sponsorship as well, the fitness company. Audi A4 touring car. It's another fun Audi touring car to drive. And again, I believe it also has a, a unique engine sound. Yeah, lovely. It looks cool. <laughs> yeah. Ford Mark IV, 1967. It's kind of related to the uh, the Ford GT40. Um, Dan Gurney drove this car, which is why you have the uh, 
bubble on top because <laughs> he was a tall dude. Um, I should say is tall dude. Um, but yeah, I have a model of this car and uh, it was really fun to do a brushing video because you have these beautiful sweeping lines like that. It's pretty fun. And this nice little flap on the end. But uh, I just think it's a cool looking race car. 1967 was just a great year for racing, I think. It's probably just a great year to be alive. <laughs> um, got these awesome uh, wheel nuts that are red on one side. But as you see the car turn around, instead of being red, they'll be blue. And I believe the idea behind that is to indicate which direction they're threaded. See, these ones are blue. Um, I imagine that you want to thread them so that they're, they tighten when turning towards the front of the car in, in the same direction as the, the wheels rotate so that wheel rotation doesn't gradually make the wheel nut loosen and then come off. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just imagining that. I'm, maybe I'm right. I don't know. The Bentley Speed 8 race car. Another uh, Group C inspired... I don't know. This is probably too late to be Group C. It's uh, 2003. But it's sort of still grouped in with those older uh, Le Mans prototype race cars. Um, just such a cool looking car though. I love it. I love this livery with the racing British British racing green kind of thing and the, um, the different uh, sponsors all over it. So it just looks elegant, I guess. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful Bentley. All right. I've seen a model of that in a jewelry shop once and I wish I could buy a model of it. All right, one of my more recent um, model brushing videos showed this car. Uh, actually, two of my videos <laughs> use this car, one of which uh, I got to sit there and brush every single D2 logo. Um, but yeah, this is a fantastic, wonderful car to drive. It's, the handling's amazing, and it's just lovely. It's, yeah, can't say enough good things about it the experience of driving this car. It's just so awesome. Um, I did talk about the tuning of it though, so I'm going to show that. Let's see, setting sheet. Um, <laughs> in particular, check this out. The limited slip, five, all of them. So it's pretty much a locked rear differential <laughs> in every single condition torque, initial torque, the acceleration sensitivity, and the braking sensitivity. Five, five, five. Yeah. Um, I also have an equal braking balance. So again, that helps the car rotate because it puts more um, braking power on the rear than you'd normally use. Um, I actually have some, some uh, negative toe angle in the rear, which spreads them open which makes the rear end more apt to turn. I have no camber angle to help the to stabilize the rear. It's just flat. Um, I have some soft front end I roll bar to help it turn. I have softened the dampers on the front. I have much softer spring rate even though the engine's in the front. Uh, yeah, everything about this car setup is is uh, meant to help it rotate. <laughs> And it's still just, you know, it does not oversteer. You can throw it as hard as you want, basically. But, I mean, that's not to say that it's not enjoyable to drive, because it is. Um, the Nissan R92C, another Group C car. Oh, oh, this is just beautiful. It's a little more fun to drive than the R89, um, just because it's... I think it's faster by a little bit, and it looks cooler, but it doesn't have that same uh, wide perspective on the camera angle, unfortunately. But but yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite Group C cars, for sure. 
Um, this is a race modified C6 Corvette ZR1. Yeah, it's pretty fun to drive. I sort of like it. Here's my Ferrari F2007. Seems to be taking a while for these cars to pop up. I hope I'm not taking too long here. <laughs> Running out of time. All right. Yeah. Um, the main memory that comes from driving this car a lot is that the steering rack is kind of slower than I want it to be. So I've actually given myself tennis elbow from racing this car a lot and yanking the wheel really hard to one side or the other because it just doesn't turn as as uh, quickly as I would like it to. So when I was competing in online races and stuff like that, yeah, that definitely caused some, some elbow pain. Uh, this is a car that I've mostly just seen in best motoring videos and, uh, you know, obviously driven a little bit here in the game, so it's just a cool prototype LM race car um, made from a Honda NSX R. And uh, I love the Kenwood livery, it's just cool. So, uh, it seemed like it's a little on the heavy side, um, but it's got a little more horsepower, 511. Um, but yeah, pretty fun car to drive. Yet another Formula Gran Turismo. Obviously, this one I've minimized the power. It's only got 443. Um, so I've obviously been racing this in events where the performance points need to be very low. I've probably added as much ballast as I can too, so... An SLS AMG, Mercedes. Um, yeah, fun car to drive. It's not quite as beautiful as the SLR McLaren, but yeah, it's a good car. Here's another one that I've recently done a brushing video on. The Takata Dome. NSX JGTC. Actually, this is Super GT by now, 2006 race car. Pretty awesome. Love it. We have a touring car upgraded version of an RX-7. Um, it has almost 500 horsepower. I'm not really sure what I was racing it for. Um, but yeah. It's kind of a nice car. I have another Amamiya RX-7. I think one of these is premium and one of them is standard. Maybe that's why I have both of them in my list. So, and this one looks like it's still at its 300 horsepower, so. But yeah, very cool car. Yep, this one is premium. Got a Ford Focus ST. I'm gonna go ahead through some of these a little more quickly. The Cusco Dunlop Subaru Impreza. I do wanna show the Spider 1600 Duetto, 1966, Alfa Romeo. Um, I must say back in the good old days of uh, Top Gear, I did sort of agree with their their running joke about Alpha that uh, you're not a true petrol head unless you've owned an Alpha and gone through the roller coaster of emotions because they tend to break down a lot but when they're working well they're just sublime and I can only imagine you know I don't know the the lovely sound of the engine you know maybe driving through Rome with the top down in one of these. Uh, yeah, conjures up a lot of images for me. <laughs> um, I've had a lot of good experiences in Rome myself, but um, yeah. I'm also partial to Rome because of the race circuits that have been in this game. Um, so yeah, racing through there in an alpha is always quite fun. The Jaguar. XJ13 race car. Um, 
This is among the uh, the cool late 60s race cars, uh, along with the Ford GT40 uh, and the Ferrari P330. Um, I don't think they did as good of a job on the engine sound of this car as they should have. It only sounds like it's V12 engine through certain rev ranges, and the rest of the time it sounds pretty artificial, but it is a very cool looking car, and it's really fun to drive so it's definitely one of my favorites again we have beautiful British racing green yeah it's got lovely proportions I think and I love the louvers in the hood too they just kind of give it texture it looks cool so alright of course I have a uh, Sebastian Vettel, uh, Red Bull X2, well, what would you call it, 2010, I guess, but uh, this was the X1 when it originally was in the game. I think they had to change the name for some reason or other. Um, if you aren't familiar with this car, it's basically a concept where Red Bull um, and Adrian Newey in particular uh, designed the car with no limits, so to speak. No limits imposed by the the race series or anything like that, where it would, Im you know, impose, uh, you know, rules about how much power it can do and how high the revs can run and so forth. And obviously, they've they've put a canopy on it. They've enclosed the wheels uh, for aerodynamic reasons and also. Um, so you get a blend of uh, using ground effect, um, you know, enclosing the wheels so that you don't get the uh, disturbed air from the spinning of the tires. Um, basically, all of this makes the car much more sleek through the air while getting as much downforce as possible. So this car's just <laughs> just silly uh, in its extreme performance. I mean, it does a lap of the Nürburgring in, in low three minutes, okay? Uh, it's got 1,500 plus horsepower, and the downforce is so high that you can just turn the wheel, no matter how fast you're going, and turn into the corners. I mean, when you first take a lap of this thing, of the Nürburgring in this thing, you won't have fast enough reflexes to do it. You just won't. You're going to have to work on it. <laughs> and after a while, I've, I've done many, many, many laps of the Nürburgring in one of these now. And uh, But it took a long time to get used to. Unfortunately, I think they've, they've recently modified the handling um, and given it more of a dead zone in the center of the steering, which, for me, made it undrivable. Um, I can't stand having a car not react when I tell it to, especially at this extreme end of the, the performance scale. So I just stopped driving it. <laughs> so, but it was fun while it lasted. Got one more of the uh, JGTC race cars, the Arda NSX. Um, Suchia's race car at one point. <laughs> the Drift King, you know. Um, but yeah, I enjoy driving this car a lot. It's really fun. And finally, the 1969 Corvette C3 convertible. It's just a really sexy car. There's all there is to it. <laughs> I mean, the handling is nice-ish. Uh, more just fun and a challenge, but uh, yeah. Mostly what I like doing is taking this to the four-hour Nürburgring because you're not racing against cars that are that difficult to beat, so uh, you can choose something that's a little more just for fun. So yeah, this is definitely, you know, a good choice. So, All right, well, there you have, uh, you know, uh, whoops, yeah. I, guess we're not gonna look at the server so all right we'll have one last look at my uh, profile here 
it's kind of amazing. I haven't looked at the the stats in a long time, uh, but it looks like I have 920 cars. And I've maxed out the credits because they still have a 20 million credit limit, which is really easy to hit. So I'm constantly just throwing away money on cars or whatever, just because otherwise all of the winnings from the races I'm throwing away. So. <laughs> Um, seems like I have 2,500 some wins, whatever that means, 97% uh, of the game progress and 85% of the trophies, whatever. I don't really uh, pay much attention to that in this game because so many of the trophies are associated with B-Spec, which I really didn't think needed to be its own thing, but whatever. Had to do a certain amount of it, so. And the total distance driven in the game of 146,747.4 miles. So, um, yeah, spent a lot of time <laughs> playing around in the game, so, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Um, I don't know what else to uh, show you without being too boring. Uh, maybe we can click on the player information. Um, <laughs> just kind of shows the the clothes I'm wearing as my driver right now, but uh, yeah, anyway, cool, all right, well, I'm sure this video is going to be quite lengthy again, and I hope that's, uh, you know, a pleasant thing for, since some people do request that, um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little nostalgic look through Gran Turismo. And um, it's certainly enjoyable to uh, show which cars, you know, kind of the origin of which cars I really fell in love with and then had to buy as um, car models. So, all right. Well, thanks for watching so much. And I really appreciate um, everybody letting me know how they uh, react to videos and, and ask me for different uh, things for future videos. So. Um, again, thanks so much for all the support, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.